financial problems, elder law, tax problems, business matters, divorce, personal injury, bankruptcy, your life, your reality. Life is complicated. There is the law and there is reality. Welcome to Law and Reality, sponsored by Thav Gross. Now here's your host, Ken Gross. Welcome to this segment of Law and Reality. Today's topic is the market is up and down and the question is how much can you afford to lose? Pat Samasco is with us today. Good morning. Good Pat morning. is our elder law expert and also a financial planner and financial consultant. That's correct. Brian Small, my co-host in pleasure crime to be here and today. fun. Absolutely a pleasure. As I said, it's it's a beautiful day. Jeffrey Kirshner. Hi. Good morning. It's a scratch disability to me. workers comp expert. Yes. Michigan I'm, State fan. Yeah. So that's the down part. I'm up and I'm down. Although it's a tough I'm time. For, it's a tough time for Spartanville yes. right now. But you know, it's, it, things will come back. Things will bounce back. Go blue. Topic today. <laughs> topic today is. We've all experienced the market. The market can do anything it wants on any given day. But for the beginning of the year till now, we've seen a lot of turbulence and it's causing concern and anxiety among a lot of people. So I thought we'd have Pat here to talk about that as well as integrate that with the state, plannings, uh, state planning issues. We've learned a lot from history, and, but what have we learned so far this year? We, we, what we've seen is major drops, some come back, more drops. We don't know where we're going to be. We won't, don't know where we're going to be next week. So the question is, should I do anything? If I, have my money in, if I have my money in the market, my savings, in a 401k, in funds, in equities, some bond funds, is that okay? Well, or, it, and when do I make changes if I see the market, if, if we're moving into a bear market, when do I change? Well, that's, that's an interesting uh, question because we love it when it's up and we hate it when it's down. And what people forget what's going on, they forgot what happened in 2008 and what happened in 2001 with the market crash. Uh, but you have to look what your risk tolerance is. You can never time the market. And a Morningstar uh, is a rating company. And they said that people's risk tolerance is based on how well the stock market's doing. So whenever the market's up, everybody's all in. You yeah, go from their friends, they're I doing have great. A we very made 20% high risk I have a very, I'm very good on risk. When I have up. zero tolerance for losing. Right. So, so are you more worried make? about how much you can make or how much you can lose? I want to make a lot, but I don't want to lose anything. So that's what you have to look at. So when the market's up, you're great. But when the market starts dropping, if you pull out when the market's dropping or down, it'll kill you because it's not there to go back up. So you have to position yourself that you can ride out the downs. You got to be able to ride out the downs. Well, that, that's you, know, the, you know, you can I, never I, time the market. Don't ever think you can time Figure the market. Figure out when it's going to go down. You'll lose every single time. You so will lose every time. You keep, I keep reading about how uh, when the market's dropping so precipitously, it's it's That's a lot of buy. it's a lot of well it could be time to buy but it's a lot of uh, required uh, like computer selling and things oh, yeah, like yeah, that yeah. and and it seems to cause the cause and effect is is that it creates a panic. Yeah, that's interesting because every uh, a private investor you have to ride it out. Every uh, investment company or banks they have these sell orders that when it's dropping it's sell and everybody else is supposed to stay in. The trouble is when you have a four hundred one k plan. It doesn't matter at the ups and downs with your 401k because it's called dollar cost averaging. When it's dropping and you keep contributing to your 401k, you're just buying more shares. When it's going down, you're buying more shares. So when it goes back up, you have more shares to go as back up. As long as up. your money's going in on a monthly basis. Yeah, and you're also buying the same type of shares. So if you're in Apple stock and it's dropping and you're buying more shares of Apple stock, you have more shares for it to go back up. But if it's dropping and you get out and put it into a money market fund, 
to ride it out in a money market fund, you list you miss the big run it never up goes in the back market. Up. Yeah. But so that's that's the quandary then. Yeah. If all of a sudden you're in the market and you're in it and it's dropping, it's too late to pull out Correct. or rebalance. That's the trouble. So if you ask any financial advisor in the world, the market's up, what should I do? Stay in. You're doing great. The market crashes, what should I do? Stay in. When the hell do you get out of the market? Well, what, this is what drives me crazy is that every day you're getting reports. The stock market is up. It's right. down. And daily I hear conversations with people. Did you see the market this afternoon? Yeah. It's up and people are celebrating. And I'm like, you know what? It's not about a daily move. You've got to look at over Long time. month monthly. How, what, what kind of segments do you look at to kind of assess? more more important than that? Let me and, and sure. this, answer that. It's question. more important than that, Jeff. So no, no. <laughs> Brian, has to say well, because Brian's more important. <laughs> okay. I, want, I want you to answer that question Go with ahead. this. At what age? What age group do you have higher risk, and when do you start to move out <clears throat> right. of the market into safer investments? And what is a safer investment? Correct. So that's a, I'm trying to. I like the question. The, a great question. Not more important. Not more important. Equally, equally as important. <laughs> as equally as important. important. We're adding right. to that idea. The closer you get to retirement, you start looking to shore up your retirement plans. Because in 2000, the uh, S&P was at 1430. In 2013, the S&P was at 1430. It went up, it went down, it went up, went down, went back up. So in 13 years, we actually made no money in the S&P 500. So the closer you get to retirement, you say, I can't ride out that downturn again. That's when you start shoring because you're not keeping contributing to your retirement accounts and you're pulling money out to live on. No one has pensions anymore. Anybody here have a pension? Brian, I know you're the only one with a pension because no, no. Ken is I giving you the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I wish. He's going to kick I me wish. off the show. Judges have pensions. <laughs> not even you're the new on, judges. Not, not the new judges. Right. No. No, no, so my, my you, retirement plan is somewhat based on the lotto. And, and, and so I follow the point, and the question is when we come back from the break, I want to talk about a case study on estate planning. But before we do that, when we come back from the break, what do you do to become more conservative in retirement as opposed to staying in the market? Yeah, and there's a difference between the 401ks and the IRAs I'll t touch on. We'll be back after the break. Is the debt piling up? Struggling to get by? It's all about preserving future income. Bankruptcy is one option. When it's right, it's the least costly, most effective way to save your home, eliminate a second mortgage, and wipe out credit card debt. But you need to address the problem now. We help people with bankruptcy. Call the experts. We're Thav Gross. Our firm will solve your problem. 888-235-HELP. That's 888-235-HELP. Carrying too much debt? Resolve your debt. Call Thav Gross. You don't need to be broke, and you don't need to hit rock bottom. If you have income and you're struggling with debt, dump it. Think about the next 10 or 20 years. If you do what the banks tell you, you'll have nothing to retire with. There is a solution. Don't waste your future. Call Fav Gross. We're experts at eliminating credit card debt. 888-235-HELP. That's 888-235-HELP. Will I outlive my money? Medicaid is so confusing. A will? Or do I need a trust? What if mom needs to go in a nursing home? At Samasco Law, we have the answers to all of these questions. Our attorneys will eliminate the confusion and develop a plan that's right for you. We are dedicated to veterans' benefits, assisted living, and nursing home care. Samasco Law can help prepare you for a long future. Call Samasco Law today. You can't work. You have to deal with pain and stress. Worse yet, our system for applying for disability benefits seeks to deny you the benefits you're entitled. Jeff Kirshner is an expert in obtaining disability and workers' compensation benefits for his clients. You need to call Jeff before you apply or after you're denied to get the benefits you deserve. 888-235-HELP. 888-235-HELP. Tax problems are major problems. Don't let the IRS levy your wages and seize your assets. There is a solution. Worth the have gross. Our firm will solve your problem. If you're behind on your taxes and owe money to the IRS, call Fav Gross. 
We've been solving tax problems for 32 years. We stop wage levies, resolve unfiled returns, and obtain the best possible settlements. Call Favgross today, 888-235-HELP. If you're retired and in a financial crisis, there is a way out. It pains me when I see a retired couple exhaust their savings by paying credit card bills and for a home hopelessly underwater. Fav Gross specializes in helping retired people in financial crisis. You just can't keep paying until you're broke. You need to address the problem now. 888-235-HELP. That's 888-235-HELP. We're Thav Gross. Our firm will solve your problem. All right, we're back. So right before the break, Pat, we were asking, the issue is I'm... In Brian's mind, I'm approaching retirement. Not necessarily in my mind. No, no, I just said you're old. I didn't say anything to do with retirement. At what point do you pull out of the equities? And I mean, I've had great growth the last two, three years in the market, but I'm a little skittish this year because it's going crazy. But where, if I'm going to go more conservative, how do I do it? Well, first of all, a lot of times, if you're in a 401k plan, which 401ks are great, they're great accumulation vehicles, they have very low fees, but with the 401k, every employee in the company has to have the exact same plan. They, they can't discriminate against employees. President Trump has the exact same thrift savings plan as the guy that pushes the broom at the federal park. They can't discriminate. So when you get to the point when you retire, or you separate from service, you can convert a 401k into an individual retirement account and you have a lot more planning opportunities because they give you more options to do it. So Right, we only have like 10 selections of investments within the 401k. And they're all great, but when you're looking at preservation of principle, you may need to get out of that. Typically, the preservation of principle is (coughs) bank accounts, CDs, the money market account, real conservative bond portfolios which don't give you a lot of the upside potential if you convert it into an equity index annuity. Index annuity has a guarantees built in. The principal is guaranteed and then the growth is based on the market. You what never about the downside? There is no <coughs> downside. You have a zero downside. The floor is zero and then the growth is based on how much certain uh, indexes uh, is not the Isn't the actual downside that if the market would have 25 percent growth the, the indexed annuity might only have 12. In other words, yeah, that may you be don't get true. the greater you don't get, growth. You don't get as much on the upside, but you lose but the no risk downside. on the downside. And which the if, you're, if you're worrying about preserving principle because you can't afford to lose when you're 75, right. it's, it's, it's a good or way to go. Or 65, because if you don't want to, if you're going to pull out when it's down, That's the don't bad. be in that yeah. thing. Put in something else. Liquidity is always issues. but so. If you're not so much worried about how much it can make because you're more concerned about losing, those are great plans for you. But you have to be able to know what those plans are. And, and, but now the, some of the new ones are out, the growth is outstanding. Now that's the kind of thing we can sit down with you and go over. Oh yeah, absolutely. Okay. I'll right. sit down with you, Ken. We'll work out a, we worked out a plan for your dad when he was in the nursing home. You we'll did? Take, we'll work out your exit strategy when Brian finally has the coup and takes Just over. Don't, on don't, <laughs> don't be working out a plan for me in the nursing home. No, 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 no. Okay. Yeah, no one's going to the nursing home. All right, here I got a case study for us. Bill and Mary. Bill is sick. 60, Mary's 58, husband and wife, three kids, Mark is 35, he's a doctor, he's in solid grounds, Jill is 33, she's married, but they're kind of struggling, they're, they're, they're okay, they're responsible, but finances are tight, Jane is 30, she's single and she's the devil, she's got some substance abuse problems, she's out there, she's, she's the devil child, good kid, but still devilish in her ways. Assets. They have a home with equity of 150 grand. They have a 401k, 500,000. Savings, 200,000. They've got some liabilities. They're carrying $20,000 of credit card debt. Dad is also taking care of Jane's credit card debt of $40,000. They had an estate plan done in 1995. It leaves everything to the survivor. And between Bill and Mary, every if, Mary, if Bill goes first, everything goes to Mary. If Mary goes first, everything goes to Bill. If the survivor's not alive, it goes to the kids. A third, third, third at 25, 30, and 35. And keep in mind, the kids are already now 30, 33, and 35. So that's the scenario. I see lots of issues. 
So I'm going to ask the questions, and I want the answers. I want the truth. Can you handle the truth? <laughs> I can handle the truth. First question, you guys. Do they need a new estate plan, or is the 1995 estate plan okay, set aside? So the 1995 sure. estate plan is legal. However, they do need a new estate plan. Why? First of all, just I don't, they don't want to just spend... Uh, we don't want to just spend 1500 1800 bucks, 2500 bucks on a new estate plan unless they really need it. So let's start off with their durable power of attorney, okay? Which, assuming that they did it in 1995, it lacks all of the re HIPAA requirements that a power of attorney should have in them now. And while a hospital may honor an old power of attorney, they're just as likely to tell you no. So you want to make sure that your durable power of attorney for health care has all the correct language in it. Yeah, plus your regular durable power <coughs> if you're dealing it with just your doctor's office right. or anything else. Isn't there something on Medicaid that you were always talking yeah. about that most durable powers don't allow gifting? And yeah, so what it is, so it, let's say a uh, doctor husband goes to the nursing home. I can protect every dime of his money if he's in a nursing home and have Medicaid pay 100% of the nursing home bill. I can protect it all. But you have to uh, do uh, some court process. You need to be able to plan. And those power of attorneys don't have the language in it that I need to be able to give the wife well, or the no kids. because no one thought about it back in 1995. Well, so this is the answer on that. You go to a family doctor, and you've been going to the family doctor for 30 years. You got cancer, you should go to the cancer specialist. It's the same thing with lawyers. That nice family lawyer that you went to doesn't have Just a clue the, about he's the If he did the power of attorney two weeks ago, it won't it's have the language. Still, because he'll need. make it more limited and more he won't restrictive because he doesn't want to give the no, powers. He won't even he won't know even what know. it is. He just picks it off. It's the same form he used for 35 years and said, sign here, and he won't even know what's like, in Like there. the corporate books when you get them and they're yeah. all messed up because Every the same Every UAW power of attorney ago. doesn't have the language that well, I Well, and also in this, the kids were minors back then, so I assume that now that they're adults, you've got to change things around right. with spouses, with their family oh, we'll get, we'll get well, let's, let's talk my, about my, that. My, we've I got want to say that, that all of our powers of attorney have the appropriate gifting language. Absolutely. Of course. Because I gave them to you. Because we've worked together with Pat on that for, for years already. <laughs> but let's, i got Mark, Jill, and Jane, and you've got the residuary clause of their trust in terms of leaving it to the other. How do we handle that? Is the debt piling up? Struggling to get by? It's all about preserving future income. Bankruptcy is one option. When it's right, it's the least costly, most effective way to save your home, eliminate a second mortgage, and wipe out credit card debt. But you need to address the problem now. We help people with bankruptcy. Call the experts. We're Thav Gross. Our firm will solve your problem. 888-235-HELP. That's 888-235-HELP. Tax problems are major problems. Don't let the IRS levy your wages and seize your assets. There is a solution. We're Thav Gross. Our firm will solve your problem. If you're behind on your taxes and owe money to the IRS, call Thav Gross. We've been solving tax problems for 32 years. We stop wage levies, resolve unfiled returns, and obtain the best possible settlements. Call Thav Gross today, 888-235-HELP. A lifetime of hard work. If you don't have the right plan in place, you can lose your home, your savings, and more. And you didn't come this far to lose everything. Samasco Law wants you to know that laws are changing. Today, the average cost of nursing home care is $85,000 a year. With proper planning, we can help protect your life savings and get you the Medicaid and nursing home benefits you deserve. How much can you afford to lose? Call Samasco Law today. If you're retired and in a financial crisis, there is a way out. It pains me when I see a retired couple exhaust their savings by paying credit card bills and for a home hopelessly underwater. Fav Gross specializes in helping retired people in financial crisis. You just can't keep paying until you're broke. You need to address the problem now. 888-235-HELP. That's 888-235-HELP. We're Thav Gross. Our firm will solve your problem. Time for announcements. I want to remind our viewers to listen to us Tuesdays 11.30 a.m., Saturdays 7 a.m. for Lawn Reality Live on Praise 102.7. Also, sign up for our free monthly contest. Go to the websites 
to sign up. The winner every month gets a free $50 Visa gift card, Lawn Reality hat, and copy of my book, Dump Your Debt. We have a seminar coming up Wednesday, May 9th, 6 to 7.30 p.m. Freedom means being debt free. We're gonna go through all the steps we use to preserve future income for you and your family, how to eliminate debt, sometimes using bankruptcy, sometimes outside of bankruptcy. Jeff Kirshner is gonna join us for a special segment on how to address a disability claim or a workers' comp claim. Attendees get a free copy of my book, Dump Your Debt. Sign up at thavgross.com, lawnreality.com, or you can call the office at 888-235-HELP. We wanna remind you, you can always come into Thavgross for a free consultation. Just go to the websites and request it. Debt issues and financial issues or estate planning issues with Brian. Elder law issues with Pat Samasco. Workers' comp or disability issues with Jeff Kirshner. Business issues with myself. You just go and request the consult or call 888-235-HELP and sign up. Also, check out our websites. There's three free reports available online. You just go there and click on the links and the report is downloaded to you. A great one on how to save your home from foreclosure. Another one on uh, Social Security with Pat Samasco. It's really worth taking a look at the free reports. Now back to the show. Carrying too much debt? Resolve your debt. Call Thav Gross. You don't need to be broke and you don't need to hit rock bottom. If you have income and you're struggling with debt, Dump it. Think about the next 10 or 20 years. If you do what the banks tell you, you'll have nothing to retire with. There is a solution. Don't waste your future. Call Fav Gross. We're experts at eliminating credit card debt. 888-235-HELP. That's 888-235-HELP. You can't work. You have to deal with pain and stress. Worse yet, our system for applying for disability benefits seeks to deny you the benefits you're entitled. Jeff Kirshner is an expert in obtaining disability and workers' compensation benefits for his clients. You need to call Jeff before you apply or after you're denied to get the benefits you deserve. 888-235-HELP. 888-235-HELP. Tax problems are major problems. Don't let the IRS levy your wages and seize your assets. There is a solution. We're Thav Gross. Our firm will solve your problem. If you're behind on your taxes and owe money to the IRS, call Thav Gross. We've been solving tax problems for 32 years. We stop wage levies, resolve unfiled returns, and obtain the best possible settlements. Call Thav Gross today, 888-235-HELP. Is the debt piling up? Struggling to get by? It's all about preserving future income. Bankruptcy is one option. When it's right, it's the least costly, most effective way to save your home, eliminate a second mortgage, and wipe out credit card debt. But you need to address the problem now. We help people with bankruptcy. Call the experts. We're Thav Gross. Our firm will solve your problem. 888-235-HELP. That's 888-235-HELP. All right, so let's talk about their estate plan. We're saying... For the HIPAA, for powers of attorney, we need to update it. But I'm also concerned about two issues on the residuary clause. The residuary clause is the provision in your trust or your will that says, this is where my estate goes. In their estate, they're leaving everything outright to the spouse. If the spouse predeceases, it's going outright to the kids at their ages, but their ages are already 30, 33, and 35, and that means they're basically going to be able to take the money right away. Well, that's Jane a problem. Jane will take it Especially, all Especially, yeah, Jane, Jane will, Jane's money, it'll be gone in a week. Jill is struggling. She'll, she'll go through it also. Or Jill could get sued. They could have financial problems. And do, you know, what about got, Mark? Mark seems fine. Put Today, him in charge. So how do you handle that? You mend the trust and say, okay, Jane gets her share, but you have a discretionary distribution language which protects the money in case she gets sued or has drug problems. You might want to do that for Jill also. Oh yeah, then you put uh, Mark the good kid in charge to watch over the money. Piece okay. of cake. All right. Next question, is it good or not good? And we, uh, Brian and I deal with it all the time, but I want to get the issue out there because we always have that issue in the meeting with husband and wife. Do you want to just leave everything outright to your spouse? Or do you want to leave it in trust for your spouse so that the spouse can take the income, invade the principal if necessary, but can't just take all the money and then give it to the tennis pro who then, remar who then 
and then the spouse dies and the tennis pro gets all the money and the kids get nothing. Is that an issue? How do you deal with that issue? Well, 99% of the time, the first marriage, the spouses want to give it to each, each other. If the spouse is starting to get older with dementia, there's a bigger risk of financial exploitation coming in, whether it's the, the, uh, the tennis pro or the, the stripper down the street. The, the problem is they don't, don't want to make any change in the golf pro. But one thing I forgot to mention, all those old trusts that people have, the marital trusts were back in the day when the tax limit was 600000 they're all still in place. Now with new Trump's tax limit of $11 million, those old trusts screw the spouses up like crazy. They it's, need, oh, it's, too, it's too limiting. It's way too limiting. Unless you wanted it limited. Right. But you have to look Those at it. They have the five and five power. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they yeah. can only take 5% or yes. $5,000. Can't change beneficiary. They're horrible for... So the idea is you have to look at the situation. Are we concerned that if second marriages, dad dies, it goes to mom, and then she's going to leave it to her kids? You have to look at what the family situation. So you can do trusts that protect from that. So that's the issue there. So Brian, two questions, because mm -hmm. we've got two minutes left on the show. What about Bill and Mary's $10,000 of credit card debt? And what about Jane's 40000 of credit card well, debt? The 40, Bill and Mary can't file bankruptcy. They've no, got money. Well, you said Bill and Mary had 20000 originally. So with regard to the $20,000 worth of credit card <laughs> debt, the fact is, is that they could realistically pay it off if they chose to. They could focus their efforts on paying it down over time and not hurting their credit. Or they could do debt resolution, resolve the debt, and it'll be gone. They've got enough money in the bank that they don't but, really need to worry about but their But they credit. shouldn't pay the interest on the credit cards. No, it's silly. No, that's silly. Okay, what but about it, Jane? They should stop paying Jane's credit cards. Well, what they will should, Jane because do? Because they're enabling Jane. Well, Jane doesn't have the ability to pay it, so it's either going to force Jane to actually take a stand and eliminate the debt through a bankruptcy, or they could negotiate and help Jane negotiate the debts using debt well, let's resolution. Let's assume Jane's making a modest income. She's living in an apartment, renting. For the most part, Bill and Mary are helping her out and paying her expenses anyway. Doesn't Jane just file bankruptcy and get rid of it? That is a logical solution. However, if, if Jane's parents pass away, all that money is going to go to Jane, and then it's going to go to the credit card companies because they're going to sue Jane and garnish her. Except we cover that problem because we've created a discretionary trust if, for Jane. If they amend their trust, correct. So re -re um, to, 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 go ahead, Jeff. Well, unless Jane marries the tennis pro. But that's <laughs> a totally even different Even if issue. Jane marries the tennis pro, if you have the discretionary trust, Jane can't take that money unless the trustee, who would be the brother, said okay, and then we have a spendthrift provision, which means creditors can't get to it, it and Brian's evil trustee in bankruptcy can't get what to it. What it comes down to is, is that you have to plan. be careful and plan properly, not just for yourselves, but for your family. That's a wrap. We'll be back next week. Pat, thanks for joining thanks us. For Jeff, me. Brian, we'll be back next week with Law and Reality.